Area 51. Well, podcast episode 51. I have spent 24 hours in the last 30 hours. Well, I, I suppose you have to add, you know, we're talking like five hours of sleep. Yes, yes. I've spent, I don't know, I, whatever. I've been learning 3D design software. I have this concept and I've just been binge designing and this thing could hit it. We'll see. It'll be interesting. I'll, I'll put up links and it, it may follow in the following weeks, but I, it's a, it's a, it's a giant cubby. It's a, like a giant cube and you sit in it and you can arrange, like it comes with pre-cut lumber. It's like Legos. You can like erector set thing. Like you can build your own giant, it's a two and a half meter cube and you can put your own junk inside and you can, you can make it a bunk bed thing. You, I mean, you know how they've got these like space saver things, like you, there's a loft in your home or like in the bedroom or something, but they're all like pre-designed. It's like a desk underneath the bed on top, you know, that type of stuff. There's no options. So I made the thing huge and I made it very easy to customize your own thing. And I whipped together about six different examples. So I, well, I've been talking to people here in Asia about uh, you know, I said, what do you think about this idea? I mean, everyone's got these, these, you know, office space. I mean, wouldn't that be nice to have a desk where you've got everything right at your fingertips? I mean, or, or if you had a cube that you could soundproof or just, just like enclose it and have a quieter place to study or do audio recording or practice music without disturbing the house or the city. If you live in a highly, uh, dense population area, anyhow, I, I just been binging, binging, binging on this. And I haven't been getting to my Linux stuff and I really want to. So I'm going to put a cap on that and, um, had, had some interesting conversations with people this week. And, you know, it's amazing to me how you go through life with some problem, like, like you do something that really irritates people and, you know, you really shouldn't do it and you don't think it's a problem, but, you know, it really is. And you do that to people and you have, you don't mean to do it. And you have no clue that it's an issue and it shouldn't really offend anyone. Like it, it's no reason to be angry, but you don't want to do that to people. I know, I know there's names for these things. It's just, we don't really think about stuff in those categories. We don't really think about the stuff that we do that we we really, really, really shouldn't do, but it's not like horribly evil and it shouldn't offend people. We don't, but we need to knock it off. We don't think about that stuff in ourselves very often, you know? So you go through life and you meet someone who totally freaks out, flips out, overreacts, not so like the person needs therapy big time because you do those things that you shouldn't do that shouldn't make people flip out. And because that person flips out and shouldn't flip out because of the things you shouldn't really be doing, you evaluate your life. You know what? I mean, you got a choice. You can dig your heels in and say, so what if I do that? It's not hurting anybody. There's no reason to cry bloody murder. You can justify yourself or you can say, you know, maybe it's fate that I met that person who reacted this unacceptable way that I didn't deserve because that unacceptable way that I didn't deserve is the only way that I'm ever going to actually knock it off. I mean, just, well, and then, you know, I mean, in the, no, George, I'm not saying that it's just all aimed at me. There's, you, well, no, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, <clears throat> but there are times that like in that process, uh, you deal with the other person and maybe that person learns that they overreact, especially if you listen. Isn't it, isn't it interesting how like reversal stuff happens like that? Um, I, I don't, I don't know what else to say other than I'm getting a lot more short winded these days. I, I know it, isn't it? I, I don't know. I don't have much to say. I'm, I'm recently, I've just been focused on. Work, 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 like do, 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 like preach always when you have to use words. And I've just been trying to preach, quote unquote, more because actions preach and words don't. So I've been trying to preach through actions more so that I don't have to use words as much. Well, I don't know. I mean, 
you know, hostilities breaking out between some Americans. Some people are getting really calm. Some people are getting really hostile. Some people are doing soul searching. And we probably are going to see some more rioting in some cities. As conflict breaks out, stay calm. Like really, seriously, there's, there's, you know, get to work. It's not a bad thing. I was just talking to my friend in Chicago about that. I said, just does it matter? Republicans, Democrats, the newspaper talks about how bad Trump is. The newspaper talks about how bad Obama is. Don't listen to it. I mean, if you got to follow the news, I mean, I follow the news, follow the news, but just keep your head low and work, work, work. Let your actions speak. So I, I, I'm really, I mean, I'm not committed to 10 minutes. So I'm just thinking about jumping to the point. We must help ourselves before we can help others. Part of this principle comes from the law of basic experience. One can only teach what one has done. Part of this principle comes from basic safety in lifeguard training. Don't become a victim yourself. You can't save a drowning victim if you drown in the process. Charity and compassion can become distractions from our own problems. They can even become addictions, both helping others and distracting us from our own problems. Take time to search your own soul. You'll make a far bigger difference when you help others by example. And that's the point. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.